The Box.io utility is available as a free download from flanderscientific.com. It provides useful toggles and controls for management of your Box.io unit, and it can be used in conjunction with other applications from FSI software partners. You can connect your Box.io via Ethernet to your current network or directly to your Mac or PC in ad hoc mode. There's an information label on the back of the unit with the default static IP address, ad hoc wireless network, SSID and password, as well as the MAC address information. In an infrastructure connection, Box.io can be connected via Ethernet to your current network. For an Ethernet ad hoc connection, connect Box.io directly to your Mac or PC with an Ethernet cable, and then assign a static IP address to your Mac or PC that's different from the Box.io's IP address. You can also connect to your computer with an ad hoc wireless connection. In your wireless access points, select the Box.io that you want to connect to, and enter the password found on the information label. For live grading and frame capture, we recommend using Box.io over Ethernet. So once connected, the utility will read back general information about the status of Box.io, and the function keys will become enabled. You can connect and manage up to nine additional Box.io units by adding tabs to your interface. Just press the button in the top right corner of the utility application. On the control page, you'll find the status window with the OSD menu toggle, and the Update Firmware button. Below that, you'll see the mode selection, the input, the range selection, and the input format settings. With single channel selected, both output channels 1 and 2 will be the same selected, active, input, and LUT. Single channel uses 33-sided dot cubelets only. When dual channel is selected, you can independently route SDI1 or SDI2 inputs to either channel 1 or channel 2. There are 16 3D LUT positions available for each channel. First, select the channel, then route the SDI input to the selected channel. For example, if you want to develop different looks for the same input and have them active at the same time, select channel 1 and route the SDI input to channel 1. Then select the LUT position to be applied to channel 1. Then select channel 2 and route the SDI 1 input to channel 2. And then select the LUT position to be applied to channel 2. In dual channel mode, you can also choose to internally route the output signal from channel 2 to channel 1 for stacking LUTs. This means that you can use Box.io to apply a 3D calibration LUT on one channel and a DIT LUT on another channel for live grading. For example, if you're using a monitor that doesn't have a 3D LUT based calibration for color space accuracy, you can now use Box.io for applying the 3D calibration LUT and, at the same time, develop looks based off the same color accurate signal. As with most LUT processing hardware, all LUT calculations on Box.io are performed in RGB color space. When dealing with YCBCR signals, a CSC or color space conversion is used to generate the RGB values for LUT processing. Box.io has four available range selections that set both the RGB scaling and clamping thresholds used. There's video range. Typically, we recommend this setting for use with LiveGrade Pro. Extended range, SMPTE full, and full range. Box.io is designed to automatically detect the payload ID in the signal. This selection can typically be left on automatic, but manual overrides are provided for two potential use case scenarios. Box.io can accept dual link SDI signals per SMPTE ST372M. The DL SDI selection must be made in order to activate dual link SDI. When selected, a list of corresponding payload ID options will be displayed. This may be left on auto if payload ID is present and correct. If the payload ID is not present, or incorrect, please use one of the available manual selections to match the incoming signal format. The other use case would be for 3G level A or level B with missing or incorrect payload ID. The automatic default selection will work with signals that have present and correct payload ID information. However, in rare circumstances, payload ID may be missing from the signal or may be incorrect. For these scenarios, Box.io provides a manual override Simply select the format that matches your signal type to properly configure your Box.io. Test patterns can be generated by Box.io by selecting the Test Pattern Generator button from the function menu. 
You can adjust your test pattern signal using the sliders and text fields available while in TPG. Press the LUT toggle button to activate the LUT. When a LUT's on, the button will turn green. Press the send button to upload a LUT to flash memory. You can select one of the 16 available LUT positions and press the save LUT button to save the current LUT. What I'm doing here is I'm saving LUTs for each channel since each channel works independently. When I go back to channel one, you'll see that my, my store position has changed. Go to channel two, you can see it's changed there as well. Now to recall the LUT, what you do is you select your channel, select your LUT position, and just press load LUT. They'll instantly recall the saved LUT and apply it to the active video. Once again, you can turn it on and off. Box.io supports up to 16 33-sided dot cube 3D LUTs in single channel plus 1D LUTs. And up to 32, that's 16 per channel, 17-sided dot DAT or 17-sided dot cube 3D LUTs in dual channel plus 1D LUTs. Box.io is capable of capturing full resolution still frames with timecode reference as a JPEG, bitmap, or raw image file pre or post 3D LUT. You also have a quick capture and save feature that allows you to quickly take frame captures and automatically save them to a location either as a JPEG, bitmap, or raw image file. To enable the capture and save feature, select the folder that you want to save the images in and then enter a name in the quick save file name box. The default is Box.io. So now clicking the capture and save button will show the image being captured and automatically saves it to your selected folder with the designated file name along with the date and timestamp. So this operation is very resource heavy and rely on your computer's ability to quickly process a full HD image, convert it to JPEG or bitmap, and then save the file. You can save about one frame per second, but some computers may be slightly slower. Box.io can now call back raw files that are saved using capture and save, and they can be loaded and displayed using the frame callback feature. You can call back reference shots as well as call back test patterns. You can click the toggle frame callback button to call back a frame. Uh, the status is green for on and red for off. Click send to upload a raw frame to flash memory. Select a memory position to store a frame using the ID position dial to select and store a raw frame to memory. Select a memory position to recall a frame using the ID position dial to recall a raw frame from memory. So the settings page is available from the buttons at the top of the Box.io tab. You can view the current Box.io status. You can also assign a new static IP address, subnet mask, and gateway and press set IP. Um, you'll have to reconnect Box.io after changing the IP address. You can assign a new SSID and password for Box.io units ad hoc wireless network by entering the SSID and password and pressing Wi-Fi set. You can also toggle Wi-Fi on and off in this panel. Then you'll see the set cubelet processing precision section. Typically if you set the highest bit depth which is 12 bit it'll yield the most precise results but you may want to select 10-bit or 8-bit if trying to match the output behavior of programs or devices processing at lower precision levels. There's also a selection to ask on LUT upload. If this is selected, when you send Box.io a 3D LUT, a LUT processing dialog will be displayed allowing you to select the level of precision used for LUT calculations. The status window provides you with current settings and info for Box.io's various modes and channels including LUT state and sizes.